This video is going to look at the behavioural therapies for phobias. And the first one we're going to be looking at is systematic desensitisation. So we're going to start with the actual theory behind what systematic desensitisation actually is. How does it work? What stages are there? How do you conduct systematic desensitisation? On your specification, there's two types of behavioural treatment you've got to know. Systematic desensitisation and flooding. And the aim of both of these is to replace that faulty association between the condition stimulus and the condition response. So in little Albert's case, the white rat and the crying, we're going to try and replace that with something else to try and teach the person that there is no need to have this phobia. So what actually is systematic desensitization? Well, it's all about progressively introducing a patient to a situation that they feel anxious about and desensitizing them to their phobia. So there's three things you've got to include in any answer you write about systematic desensitization, and that is teaching them relaxation techniques. We then move on to creating something called a hierarchy of fear before finally working through each stage of that hierarchy while using the relaxation techniques to remain calm. And we're gonna go through each of these stages in a little bit more detail so you understand what they mean. So the behavioral explanation states that we mainly have a phobia because of avoidance behavior. And with avoidance behavior, we can't learn that a phobia is not really that harmful. So you think of Mr. Hastings and the spider, he avoids them, so he can never really be around spiders in order to see that they don't really pose any danger to him. And the idea of gradually exposing someone to their phobia helps them realize that the spider or the phobic stimulus isn't actually dangerous or something to be scared of at all. So how it actually works, how systematic desensitization would actually be conducted in a clinical setting. The first thing you do is you teach someone relaxation techniques and there's a wide variety of relaxation techniques available. It might be that you teach them deep breathing. It might be teaching them deep muscle relaxation techniques. The whole idea here is that this person can use these relaxation techniques anytime they start to experience fear or anxiety. Once you've done that, the therapist will sit with the client and they'll develop something called a hierarchy of fears. So that'll be from the very least fearful situation. So it might be a cartoon of a spider up to the most fearful situation. It might be a spider crawling on your face. So you develop all the little stages in between. It might be from a cartoon spider to seeing a photograph of a real spider. Then you might see a spider in a box. Then you might have the spider in a box very close to the person. Then you might have the spider out of the box, but on the table. Then you might have the spider on your hand. Then finally, spider crawling on your face. So you've got all these little stages in this hierarchy. You then work through that list. The client and the therapist will work through the list together. So every time and every stage, you'll start to use those relaxation techniques, the deep breathing, the muscle relaxation. Whenever they start to experience anxiety and fear, they'll put those strategies into use. Once they've got through one stage and they're happy, they move on to the next stage and do the exact same thing. Use those relaxation techniques until they're ready and then move on to the next stage. If they become too anxious at one stage, so let's say Mr. Hastings can't handle the spider being on the table in front of him, free outside of the box, what we'll do is we can stop that situation if the relaxation techniques aren't working and we can go back a stage and we can start that again. So he realizes, right, it's actually not that scary. Let's move on back to the stage I was afraid of. And it's all about this gradual exposure. If you gradually expose them to their phobic stimulus, eventually they will overcome it. So this is a real example of a hierarchy of fear. Thinking about a spider, has a little rating of 10, fear rating of 10. So they're out of 100, 10. And then each stage you move up, looking at a photo of a spider, looking at a spider in a box, 
Each stage of that hierarchy, the fear rating gets higher and higher and higher until you get to 100, which is letting the spider crawl on your bare arm. And the client and the therapist would sit down very early on when they meet and try and create a specific hierarchy for that person's phobia. The idea of counter conditioning is all about trying to learn to be relaxed when they're faced with a phobic stimulus. So when Mr. Hastings sees the spider, he's learning to become relaxed in that situation. And the theory is that a relaxed response and an anxiety or fear response can't exist together. And if you do this gradual exposure treatment, then the relaxed response is the one that becomes dominant. That's the one that takes over and removes the fear and the anxiety that you experienced before. And that is called counter conditioning. We're counteracting the initial response and bringing about a learned response of relaxation. Any answer you get then must be including these three stages. You learn the relaxation techniques, deep breathing, muscle relaxation, whatever it may be. You develop a hierarchy of fear from the least to the most stressful scenario. And then you work through those stages using the relaxation techniques that you've been taught. And that overall is how systematic desensitization is conducted. We're now going to have a look at the strengths and limitations of systematic desensitization. So one of the main strengths is that it has been shown to be a very effective form of treatment. Um, not only can clients go to a therapist to get it, you can also now get it on iPads, Android, on all types of different apps. So you can go on now if you've got a phobia, quickly type it in in the iTunes store or on Google Shop and try and download an app for it and give it a go yourself. It's very, very fast. Okay, It doesn't require much thinking from the actual patient and can be used to a really wide range of people. And we're going to have a look at a few studies now that show how effective it actually is. So Bronson and Thorpe did a study with technophobes, people who are afraid of computers. And they had two groups of people, one group who received systematic desensitization and another group who received no treatment whatsoever. And they found that those who experienced systematic desensitization, almost the vast majority of them overcame their phobia of computers. They were cured of being technophobes. So this clearly shows that this treatment can be used to overcome certain phobias. Gilroy also conducted a study showing the effectiveness of systematic desensitization. He had 42 patients and he divided them into three different groups. He had a control group, he had a relaxation group, so he had no exposure, just the relaxation techniques, and also a systematic desensitization group. And each group would have three 45 minute sessions based on their fear of spiders. So, control group, no treatments whatsoever. They weren't actually one of the experimental conditions. You have the relaxation techniques, no exposure, and the systematic desensitization. And what Gilroy found was that when he followed these people up at three months and 33 months, the systematic desensitization group were less fearful than the other two groups. So it shows it can be used to help control and combat phobias and also shows that it's got very long lasting effects. If you look 33 months, so over a year later, people were still had less fear of spiders if they had used systematic desensitization. But of course, there are weaknesses of this study. It only focuses on those who have fear of spiders and might not be able to generalize it to fear of snakes, fear of heights, fear of lifts in closed spaces. It might only be specific to this particular phobia. And that is a weakness of this study. Although it shows systematic desensitization works, maybe it only applies to spiders. A lot of people really, really do prefer this type of treatment to flooding. Flooding is when you expose someone solely to a phobic stimulus and there's no gradual increase in exposure. You just put the spider on their body, on their arm, on their face and get them to cope with it. So this is really an acceptable form of treatment in comparison to that because it doesn't really bring about that same degree of trauma. And some people find the relaxation te techniques very pleasant. 
You can learn to use them in other parts of your life, deep breathing, muscle relaxation, whenever you're stressed or anxious. They can use them and find that a really pleasant experience. And also, it's got very low refusal rates. A lot of people in flooding, for example, will pull out of it and not get involved in the study, not get involved in the treatment. They can't handle the stress that it causes just putting a spider on you. Whereas this, a lot of people continue with it. They find it relaxing. They find it quite a comfortable experience and don't mind the gradual exposure. However, it's not effective for all phobias. We've already had a little look at the theory of biological preparedness and it's really hard to cure certain evolutionary phobias, such as phobias of the dark or phobias of heights, because according to that theory, we've evolved these certain phobias. We've evolved to develop them. They're now innate. They're part of us. And it's more effective generally for personal experience phobias. So by that, I mean, if you've had a bit of trauma in your life, such as being bitten by a dog or being um, bitten by a snake, then it can be used to help cure those phobias. Whereas evolutionary phobias is probably not as effective for. When you're evaluating any form of psychological treatment, you can always make the comparison to drugs. In psychology, there's always those two options. You can go down a psychological route with treatments or you can go down a drug route. And in comparison to drugs, therapy is far, far more expensive. You might have to have many, many sessions over many, many years in order to actually treat yourself. Drugs don't cost that much. It's also more time consuming. You've got to take hours at a time, maybe for days and days a week. Whereas drugs, you just pop in a pill. It's an awful lot quicker and an awful lot more of a speedy process. And also, the main strength when it compares to drugs is this actually treats the symptoms and the cause. Okay, you're looking at treating the actual problem. Drugs just treat the symptom. They don't get away the actual psychological problem behind it. If you stop taking the drugs, the problem usually comes back. But whereas with psychological treatments like systematic desensitization, it usually treats the cause as well. You're treating the problems that exist. So if you treat that, the symptoms go away as well. Keywords then, we want to be getting into an answer if it asks us to evaluate systematic desensitization. We want to talk about it being effective. OK, there are studies to support. We've looked at the technophobe study, Gilroy study on spiders. There is evidence out there to suggest it works. It helps combat phobias. It's a far more acceptable form of treatment compared to flooding. However, it might not be effective for all phobias. Certain evolutionary phobias may be innate in us for a certain reason. We've evolved certain phobias and treatments might not be able to help us with that. And in comparison to drugs, Yes, therapies take longer. Yes, therapies are more time consuming, but they treat the actual cause. And that is what makes the symptoms go away. So maybe they're better than drugs in the long run. Whereas drugs, you stop taking them, the phobia may well come back.